This week on Council Bluffs News. The Charles E. Lakin YMCA is open for business. The South 4th Street YMCA is replaced with a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Then see how you could prevent your animals from being harmed in the frigid winter weather. Also, the risk is far greater than the award when warming up cars in the morning. See how you can try to prevent car theft around this time of the year. And Jamie Lincoln joins us in studio to talk about the Impact CB Young Professionals kickoff party. That and more, all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Hello and welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News, I'm Brandon Taverti. The YMCA on South 4th Street offered fitness and good health to the people of Council Bluffs for decades. That's still the goal with the organization moving to a brand new facility in a new location. And we are a group that go It's the start and, uh, of a new era. This is a great, great milestone. Bringing joy to the people of Council Bluffs. This is so exciting, it's great for the community. Friday, December 15th. The Charles E. Lake and YMCA hosts a ribbon cutting showing off the brand new facility off East Canesville Boulevard. We had over 150 people here today to help us celebrate opening this amazing facility, a new YMCA. The new facility replaces the Y on South 4th Street. That location had been used since 1979 and began to show its age. We felt like it was the time was right to do um, an expansion project where we can get a new facility and the old facility is going to be refurbished and created another business in town. Thus, this 17 and a half million dollar beauty was born. And the look of the fitness area doesn't disappoint. I think that the design is beautiful. Um, everything is so state of the art. Everything, all of the equipment is brand new. Um, even the tile on the, the locker room wall, it's beautiful, all of the colors. The 73,000 square foot facility is a two-story building that consists of a basketball gym, weight room, game area, two pools, and a whole lot more. Offering abundant space and a variety of equipment, officials say the Charles E. Lake and YMCA is suited for all ages. We have people from you know the kids that we have all the way to our senior citizens and so there's programs for everybody. A personal favorite for Omaha resident John Griffey is the basketball gym. The size of the area and the number of hoops on display meets a variety of needs. The my team practice here we only do a scrimmage we have like this no, not like that because the other team is going to be over there playing basketball. It's a new facility for a new year, continuing the long-standing tradition of keeping wellness in mind. We want to make sure that um, sick, well, it doesn't matter. We have a nice transition of care. You feel safe, you feel welcome, you feel energized by this organization, this facility, and that the entire community comes together. If you want to find out more information on how to break a sweat while having fun, visit lakin.metroymca.com. Typically, kids and adults wear pajamas when going to bed, but it's not every day someone is able to wear them outside of their home. The Union Pacific Museum is encouraging visitors to get into their favorite PJs and part of family night. Good job, guys. The evening is all about getting cozy go, 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 go. and having a good time. Everything is fun. Friday, January 5th, the Union Pacific Museum hosts pajama night for their monthly family night. The theme's purpose is to give an easy-going vibe. For a lot of them, it's a, a nice excuse to go out and do something, but be ready to go to bed as soon as you get home. There's also the wonderful post-holiday relaxation. Fenders, games, arts and crafts, and more on display throughout the museum for all ages to enjoy. It's fun for everybody. You never know what you're going to win on the, the wheel. Radio plays music throughout the night. It's just 
always different. Along with the fun events, visitors take the opportunity to check out the most recently added display. We just opened in December our newest exhibit on the modern railroad. So working on the railroad, come in, see what we've updated it to, play our build the train game, watch our model train go around its track, and try out the new simulator. For more information on upcoming events at the UP Museum, visit uprrmuseum.org. The bitter cold has rolled in the metro area. Many families are able to crank up the heater to stay warm, but outdoor pets don't have the luxury. That's why it's important to know when conditions are safe for your furry friends. That begins our coverage of news around the bluffs. Temperatures have dropped well below freezing in recent weeks, and for pets that stay outside, the cold weather can be very harmful. Midlands Humane Society's Corey Nelson tells us that despite your fun-loving animal having a fur coat, it's important to keep your pet inside during extreme conditions. Bring them in as much as possible. Make them part of your family is what we always like to see. Um, if they do have to be outside, maybe there's a shed, maybe there's an outside garage, something that they can get inside and out of the elements, would be something that we would highly recommend doing. Council Bluffs actually has a law in place stating that if temperatures dip below 40 degrees any time between November 1st and March 31st, animals left outside must be provided adequate shelter. For more information on pet safety tips in the winter, visit avma.org. Marilyn Coffey has written three books and a whopping 600 poems. Her imagination and creativity has produced a strong following of loyal readers. Now fans get the opportunity to meet the author at the Council Bluffs Public Library. Saturday, January 6, a book author visit is at the Council Bluffs Public Library. She shares stories about her new book called That Punk Jimmy Hoffa. She explains the origins on how she wrote the book and more. Coffey says she is honored of the opportunity to talk to local fans. I enjoy doing this a lot. It's one of the regular parts of being a writer is coming out and talking, and I've grown to really enjoy it. You get so much feedback from uh, people that's uh, thought-provoking, too. Marilyn Coffey has wrote a record-setting novel and a prize-winning poem. For more information on her books and on the popular author herself, visit MarilynCoffey.net. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, the Great Train Show takes place at the Mid-America Center. See how train fans of all ages enjoy the displays and scale models throughout the MAC. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. It's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, he's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do. I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. It's me, Artie. Come 
see what I collected from the Creative Galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think outside the box. We'll never get older. Each one Go be amazing. amazing! Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Hello and welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Brandon Taverti with my guest, Jamie Lincoln, who's the board president of Impact CB. Jamie, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. No problem. So there's an event coming up at the Thunder Bowl on January 18th called the Impact CB Young Professionals Kickoff Party. Before we get into the event, can you uh, explain what the Young Professionals program is all about? We're uh, part of the chamber for the young part of the community to do some social events to uh, get into the community and make more of an impact. Awesome. And then can you tell me a little bit about the event? Uh, this is our kickoff event to uh, get our members all together to do some networking. Uh, it's bowling, beer, and pizza. <laughs> Awesome, and I was just going to ask you what's all <laughs> the event's about, but you said bowling, beer, and pizza, and um, you say beer, so does that mean there's going to be an age limit there? Yes, we do. It's uh, 21 to 45 is our is our range, but yeah, definitely 21 and older. <laughs> awesome, and um, why have this event? What is the purpose of it? It's our kickoff to get everybody back into the year and uh, start our networking. Awesome. What is your favorite part about this event? Uh, definitely, uh, it's our biggest event of the year, so getting everybody together and uh, the fun. It's, it's, our, it's our funnest event, for sure. <laughs> and will you be bowling? I will. Are you pretty good? <laughs> I'm average. <laughs> yeah? What, what, what do you think your uh, average score is, usually? Uh, you know, I'm about 120. I'm not, I'm not too bad. <laughs> Better than me. I get like 70, and then I cry, and then throw <laughs> a fit and everything like that. <laughs> Awesome. And then uh, is there a fee for the event? Uh, yes, our fee for the year is $30, but that lets you into all of our events for the year. And we do um, one event a month. Awesome. So. Um, can you explain maybe uh, what those events will be coming up? Um, we do an uh, annual Humane Society event. We raise money for the Humane Society. Um, we generally do a Treat the Troops event for our overseas. We have um, just, yeah, a lot of events. So. Awesome. Well, I look forward to the event, and I heard you got my boss into it. And, yeah, we uh, hope to see you there, too. Yeah, I'll definitely be uh, covering it, I think. So awesome. <laughs> I'll be there. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No problem. More Council Bluffs news after the break. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Mm. 
don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. Trains draw interest from people of all ages all around the country. A great example of the widespread enthusiasm is at the Mid-America Center as models, merchandise, and more are on display at the annual Great Train Show. The sound is unmistakable. And the passion on hand, nearly unmatched. We've got a great layout presentation. Saturday, January 6th, the Great Train Show rides into the Mid-America Center. A lot of people have been in here. The expo dedicated to trains features a variety of different activities with an obvious focal point. So it's really exciting. We get a lot of shows all in one place. There are a lot of scale layouts that are running and then we, our layout is not running since our track is outside, but it's fun to get a chance to hang out with people. The show consists of 300 tables of vendors and dealers from all over the country, selling and showing train related products. To be able to come and purchase new and old, uh, used, uh, it's, this is a, a great place to do it. Not only is this event exciting for the onlookers, it's also a benefit for the vendors like the Northwestern Railway Society. So it's good for us to be at a show so we can let people know we're out there and we give free rides. They just need to go a little bit out of the, off the beaten path and then they'll find us. What might be the most jaw-dropping part of this expo is the train track scale models. Mine's going fast. Jack Watson says the key to building an impressive display is a lot of hard work and dedication. It's just patience. Think about what you're doing. Don't get ahead of yourself. Sometimes I have to tear out stuff because I got too far involved in it. Jack Watson says the key to building an impressive display is a lot of hard work and dedication. As you can see today, the kids go crazy. <laughs> they love it. It can take months to build models like this. But for Watson, seeing the reaction makes it worth it. The, uh, the hobby itself is amazing. It, it, it never, uh, never ceases to amaze me. The volume of people that show up, young and old, uh, they, uh, each three-year-old has the same smile as, a, as an 85-year-old. And enthusiasts on hand all share the same passion, regardless of age. During the winter months, a common practice for many is to warm up vehicles before hitting the road getting them nice and toasty for the drive into work or school. The risk of leaving the vehicle running and unattended, however, is far greater than the award as car theft is more common when the air turns frigid. Warming up vehicles in the winter is a risky move. It's definitely a bad idea. With the cold weather here, it's common that the people start up their vehicle, blasting the heater inside without being in the vicinity. Although the practice is common, Sergeant Jason Bailey of the Council Bluffs Police Department says it's not a wise choice. This time of year, um, thieves are out and about. They're, they're out looking for people that do just that. Start the car up, go inside, um, and they'll, they'll take advantage of that. Officials say car theft is a reoccurring problem during this time of the year. You know, I, I don't know exact numbers. A couple a week, easy. Um, several a week, probably. Um, in the entire Omaha metro, we have... We have more than our fair share of stolen vehicles, unfortunately. For owners of newer vehicles, there's an even better solution. We recommend if you're going to do it, use a remote start. Nothing is guaranteed. Obviously, there's probably something out there or they're working on something, you know, that will defeat a remote start. But right now, that's the safest, you know, advice that we could give if you have to warm, warm your car up. For owners of older vehicles or those not equipped with remote starts, the CBPD recommends drivers to brave the elements and bundle up to fight off the cold. They also say never leave an unlocked vehicle running and unattended. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, we look at these friendly pets looking for a home in our Pets of the Week. Also, see what's going on around CB in our weekly events calendar. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untodd-like of you.
Come on, Todd. Come on, man. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Drop that baby. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Midlands Humane Society and Pets of the Week. So first off, we have Mama Masha, who is liking to eat a little bit while we're chit-chatting. So Masha, as we call her, she is number 25630. She was an owner surrender who came to us this August of 2017, or this last August. Um, she is obviously a little darling, long-haired calico kitty, loves people, loves attention, adorable pink nose, beautiful green eyes. She is not fond of other cats, so if you are a one cat owner um, and would like to make Mama Masha yours, she would love to come to your house, be the only cat, and uh, snuggle up on your lap and get some treats. So if you're interested, Masha25630. Next up we have Bootsy, and his number is 26716. Bootsy came in on December 9th as a stray, he is a little bit shy, but once he warms up, he does like to get pet. He's got an adorable little face. We'll try to get a picture of that again. And like most of them, they all love their treats, just like us humans. Oh, hello, Bootsy. So this is Bootsy at Midlands Humane Society, three years old, handsome little coat um, that he's got on him, nice black and white, really interesting facial markings and his number is 26716. All right, last but not least of our cats here at the Humane Society is Bob, Bobcat as we often call him, or Robert when he's in trouble. Um, so Bobcat's number is 25132. Bob actually came to us this summer and he was uh, the victim of a car accident, we believe, and that car accident damaged his tail to such a good degree that we had to actually amputate the tail. Um, he also was just not a healthy cat from when we got him. He had a lot of upper respiratory, covered in fleas, so he really is a success story as far as how much he has come back and improved. The reason we have a bowl of water here is that Bob does not typically drink water like a normal cat does. He likes to stick his paw in the water and then lap it off of his paw and enjoys water that way. Of course, he's not doing it at the moment, but that is typically how he drinks his water. He is, he's a little bit of a troublemaker. He's quite inquisitive. 
He seems to get along well with the younger cats and kittens when we've had them in the office together and playing. Um, he has gotten along quite well with um, animals that are a little smaller than him. But he's a fun, entertaining cat to have around, a little bit messy. So his owner is going to have to be um, a little bit accommodating to his interesting traits. If you're interested in Bob, his number is 25132. This is Kylo, such a neat big guy. His number is 22735. He's between three and four years old, we believe. He was found as a stray on State Orchard Road, so not terribly far from our location, back all the way on December 12th. So we've had him for just about a month. He's really sweet, he's quite laid back, likes his treats like most, uh, most of the dogs do. We think he would be a great family dog. He doesn't seem terribly dog reactive, um, pretty easy going. And if you'd like to come in and meet Mr. Kylo, um, he is a black lab and a hound mix. His number is 22735. Now time for a look at this week's events calendar. The Jenny Ed Sports Med Max Shootout is at the Mid-America Center from Thursday, January 11th through Saturday, January 13th. Enjoy talented boys and girls basketball teams from the metro area compete. A variety of high schools will be participating, including Thomas Jefferson, St. Albert's, Glenwood, and much more. For more information on the schedule and ticket information, visit Caesars.com slash Center. Then on Thursday, January 11th, another class of business skills for artists take place at the Harvester Artist Lofts. For this week's class, up and coming artists will learn the social media basics. Students will have a chance to learn how to develop online promotional strategy and up your social activity on the variety of networks. Learning tools on how to use Facebook and Twitter to benefit artwork will also be taught. The class is $15 per person or $10 for PACE members. The event is from 6 to 8.30 p.m. For more information to reserve a seat, call 712 396-2484. And finally, on Wednesday, January 17th, locals are able to join a demonstration taught by Shane Sanders. People will be able to learn some tips when it comes to defending themselves and techniques on self-defense. The event is open to everyone. No fee is required. Soak in some fun from 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. For more information on the upcoming event, visit councilbluffspubliclibrary.org. Thank you for tuning in and watching this week's Council Bluffs News. Feedback and story ideas are always welcome. You can shoot us an email at cbtv at iwcc.edu or dial up 712-325-3312. You can also look us up on social media, search CBTV17 on Facebook and Twitter. Also, make sure you stay on CBTV and check out your local sports teams on the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Brandon Taverti.